Not only does hybridization explain the shapes of molecules, but it also explains the characteristics of single, double, and triple bonds, as well as the delocalization of electrons in resonance structures. In this lesson, we'll explore how hybridization affects covalent bonding. In order to explain hybridization, I need to talk about the two ways that electron pairs form a bond. The most basic way is the sigma bond. In a sigma bond, the overlap of electrons happens in this space directly in between the two atoms. But if that space is already full, then electrons will still be able to form a pi bond. A pi bond forms from overlap of electrons above and below the internuclear axis. Very importantly, on this slide is shown a single pi bond. It may have two regions of electron density above and below, but that is just one bond. Looking at these more in depth, we see that sigma bonds are formed from end-to-end -end overlap of two orbitals. There are lots of ways to make sigma bonds, but they all share one thing in common. The overlap is directly between the atoms. Pi bonds, on the other hand, do not have electrons directly between the two atoms. Instead, a pi bond extends above and below the two atoms. It will be important to this lesson that you know which type of orbitals make these bonds. In general, hybrid orbitals make sigma bonds, while p orbitals make pi bonds. Pi bonds also tend to be weaker than sigma bonds. The first bond formed between two atoms is a sigma bond, but each additional bond after the first is a pi bond. So a single bond is a sigma bond. A double bond is one sigma bond and one pi bond. A triple bond is one sigma bond and two pi bonds. To make sense of this, imagine the first bond is placed in the most obvious spot directly between the two atoms. But after that space is taken, there isn't room for any more electron pairs. So after the first bond, each additional bond has to form above and below or in front of and behind the atoms. The concepts of sigma and pi bonding are intertwined with the ideas of hybrid orbitals from the last lesson. We saw that there are three ways to hybridize the valence shell S and P orbitals. We can put two of them into the blender and get two sp hybrid orbitals and then have two p orbitals remaining. Or we can put three into the blender to get three sp2 hybrid orbitals and have one p orbital remaining. Or we can blend them all to get four sp3 hybrid orbitals. But the blend is not the end. What happens to these orbitals after they've been hybridized? Well, hybrid orbitals will form either sigma bonds or hold lone pairs. Any remaining p orbitals are used for pi bonds. Very rarely, some p orbitals might be left empty, such as with the elements beryllium and boron. But usually think p orbital, pi bond, sigma single. This relationship is mutually exclusive. So after you identify sigma bonds, pi bonds, and lone pairs in a Lewis structure, the sigma bonds and the lone pairs will go into the hybrid orbitals, and the pi bonds will involve the p orbitals. Knowing this information, let's build up some molecules. We'll start with ethane, C2H6. The Lewis structure of ethane is shown here on the left. There are a total of seven bonds, all of them are single bonds, sigma single. All seven sigma bonds will involve a hybrid orbital. This 3D view shows two carbon atoms that are sp3 hybridized. We can see that each carbon has four hybrid sp3 orbitals shown in yellow. When these orbitals overlap, as on the right image, they form sigma bonds. As we expect from Vesper, each carbon atom has a tetrahedral geometry. Because ethane has only single bonds, ethane has only sigma bonds. It's important to know 
that sigma bonds can rotate without breaking. These two sides of the ethane molecule spin like a top. In fact, in room temperature, they are spinning at about 50 billion rotations per second. Sigma bonds aren't the only things that use hybrid orbitals. Lone pairs as well live in hybrid orbitals. Let's compare methane to two similar molecules that contain lone pairs, ammonia and water. All these molecules are sp3 polarized and have tetrahedral electronic geometry. But in ammonia, one of the sp3 orbitals contains a lone pair, which gives this molecule a molecular geometry of trigonal pyramidal. In water, two of the hybrid orbitals contain lone pairs. Water has a bent molecular geometry. Moving on to double bonds. Remember, a double bond is composed of one sigma bond and one pi bond. We'll explore the example molecule ethylene, C2H4. In ethylene, there are four single bonds and one double bond. This means we'll have five sigma bonds and one pi bond in this molecule. Both carbons will be sp2 hybridized. They will keep an extra p orbital around to make that pi bond. Pay special attention to the orbital diagram on the right. If we take three orbitals and blend them in our hybridizer, we end up with three hybrid orbitals and one remaining p orbital. The remaining p orbital is critical because it forms our pi bond. Let's see it in action. This image shows the different bonds formed in ethylene. The first picture shows only the sigma bonds. Each carbon has three sigma bonds arranged in a flat triangle or trigonal planar. Each carbon also has one remaining p orbital, which extends above and below the plane of the other atoms. Both lobes of the p orbital interact above and below, forming a pi bond, which is shown in purple. The image on the far right shows all of these bonds on the same molecule. Notice that they are separated in space. The sigma bond is in between the carbons, and the pi bond is above and below, forming sort of a sandwich. Unlike sigma bonds, pi bonds prevent rotation. Because the pi bond extends above and below the atom, it cannot be rotated without breaking. In ethylene, the double bond locks these atoms into a flat shape that does not rotate. Acetylene, C2H2, contains a triple bond. A triple bond is one sigma and two pi bonds. In order to form a triple bond, the carbon atoms must be sp hybridized. sp hybridization makes two hybrid orbitals pointing in opposite directions and leaves behind two p orbitals. The hybrid orbitals, colored in purple, form sigma bonds between the carbon atoms and between the carbon and hydrogen atoms. Then the remaining p orbitals, colored in pink, form two pi bonds. One pi bond goes above and below the atoms. The other goes in front of and behind the atoms. Try to imagine the bottom image in three dimensions. There's a literal tube of electrons between the two carbon atoms. In organic chemistry, you'll see that this electron tube allows acetylene to form many bonds with other carbon atoms. Here's another picture of acetylene bonding in case the last one didn't jive with you. SP hybridized carbons form a linear molecule. Remember that pi bonds cannot rotate without breaking the bond. Also, maybe you can see from this slide why there is no such thing as a quadruple bond. Where would the electrons go? The triple bond fills up the space between the atoms with a sigma bond, then it fills the space above and below, the atoms with the pi bond, then fills the space in front of and behind the atoms with another pi bond. Time for a practice problem. How many sigma and pi bonds are in the circular molecule benzene? Also, what is the hybridization on each carbon? First, let's count the total number of bonds. There are nine single bonds and three double bonds. 
Each single bond is a sigma bond. Each double bond is a sigma bond and a pi bond. So in total, we have 12 sigma bonds and three pi bonds. Each carbon atom makes two single bonds and one double bond, meaning each carbon atom makes three sigma bonds and one pi bond, meaning each carbon atom needs three hybrid orbitals and one unhybridized p orbital. This corresponds to sp2 hybridization. This slide shows the sigma bonds of benzene in purple, along with the remaining unhybridized p orbitals in pink. Before we move on to the next slide, look at the right image. The p orbitals of benzene go above and below the blue hexagon. They form a little ring around the molecule, which is very important. Benzene has two resonance structures shown on the left. The resonance hybrid on the right is a combination of both structures. The bonds in between the carbon atoms are therefore intermediate between a single and a double bond. They have a bond order of 1.5. If we showed the pi bonds between the p orbitals for each resonance structure, they would look like this. However, in this image, we've shown each pi bond localized to two carbon atoms. In other words, the pink balloons do not touch. So an electron in one pink balloon will never be able to meet its friends in the other pink balloons. This is what's meant by localized electrons. However, this does not reflect the real properties of the benzene molecule. Instead, we should think of benzene with delocalized electrons thanks to its resonance. These electrons form a donut above and below the blue hexagon. Resonance hybrids have delocalized electrons, meaning that the electrons flow freely between some bonds and sometimes lone pairs in the molecule. Time for one last practice problem. Look at this molecule. How many pi bonds does it have? What is the hybridization of the oxygen and carbon atoms? Pause the video now and try your best. Let's take a molecular inventory of this molecule. I count nine single bonds and two double bonds. Each double bond has one sigma bond and one pi bond. So this molecule has a total of two pi bonds. The molecule also has four lone pairs and all the lone pairs will be in hybrid orbitals. Moving on to hybridization, we don't have any large atoms, so we don't have to worry about d orbital hybridization. We also don't have to worry about hydrogen because it only has a single s orbital available and cannot form any hybrids. So for oxygen and carbon, our hybridization options are sp, sp2, and sp3. If one of these atoms only has lone pairs and single bonds, such as the two in yellow on the right, then that atom is sp3 hybridized and has a tetrahedral electronic geometry. If the atom is making one pi bond, then we need to reserve a p orbital for the pi bond. So the remaining sigma bonds and lone pairs will reside in sp2 hybrid orbitals. None of our molecules are making two pi bonds, but if they were, they would be sp hybridized. To wrap up our discussion of hybridization, I'd like to take a step back and point out the patterns in hybridization we see for the most common elements in organic chemistry, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. Each of these elements brings a different number of valence electrons to the table as shown in their orbital box diagrams on the left. And each of these elements can be sp3, sp2, or sp hybridized. And I'll show an example for each of those. When these atoms are sp3 hybridized, they have a total of four lone pairs or sigma bonds. Carbon is happiest with four single bonds. Nitrogen is happiest with three single bonds and one lone pair. 
Oxygen is happiest with two single bonds and two lone pairs. When these atoms are sp3 hybridized, they will reserve a p orbital to make a double bond. So sp2 carbon will be making two single bonds and one double bond. sp2 nitrogen will be making one single bond, one double bond, and have one lone pair. sp2 oxygen will be making one double bond and have two lone pairs. When these atoms are sp hybridized, they will reserve two p orbitals for making two double bonds or one triple bond. sp2 carbon will make two double bonds or one triple bond and one single bond. sp2 nitrogen will make one triple bond and have one lone pair. sp2 oxygen cannot exist without a plus one formal charge, so it's relatively rare. When it does form, it makes a triple bond and has one lone pair.